Hello and welcome back to another guide for Warhammer 40k Chaos Gate. My name is Saiken. I do concise guides for tactical games that should help you in order to succeed at the game. Today we are going to take a look at equipment and stratagems. I bundled both together because in my perspective stratagems are an extension for whatever team comp you are running and will help you with the right equipment uh, to reach whatever you want. So to a degree, Stratagem's um, task is to compensate for whatever your team and your equipment isn't bringing to the table. So we're going to go through the uh, Stratagem's uh, one by one and I'll just keep it very brief here to give you my perspective on where they fall on the spectrum of very useful as in a tier s tier and less useful and why that is the case uh, so quicksilver you're starting off with that uh, stratagem it remains moderately useful until the end of uh, the game it has more use at the beginning less use at the end of the game 2 ap is decent but at the end of uh, the game specifically with stun mechanic and a lot of the passive skills in the trees um, classes will generate ap by themselves therefore uh, 2 ap um, decreases in just value heal one and heal two both uh, so quicksilver i would give it a solid b tier rating heal one and heal two uh, can be used throughout the game i would give it a b plus maybe a tier rating depending on what you're um, playing uh, so healing can be done in three ways in the game the apothecary uh, can heal uh, by using willpower very efficiently so you can use healing service goals again apothecary can use that even more efficiently or you're using stratagems for me both of those stratagems come only into play when you're having no other means of healing because your equipment just didn't leave room for healing sufficiently or when you are so sure that you're not uh, going to take much damage uh, then you're maybe taking heal uh, too into it therefore there is a bit of a niche um, character to it as the grain progresses healing becomes less and less relevant because you will take less and less damage and um, oftentimes this can be replicated by equipment so to be fair um, i would give it maybe a b plus um, at the beginning of the game and as the game progresses it kind of goes down to c uh, the opposite is true for willpower one and two um, by the way i think personally willpower one is better than willpower two because this year restores 12 uh, will points at best uh, later uh, your knights will have 15 18 i had all the way up to 25 willpower so this year will just be more bang for the buck and realistically some of your knights will be more willpower hungry at the beginning of the game i would give it um, a c tier because you're seldomly reaching that point where willpower is that needed later in uh, the game i would give it an a even a plus uh, tier because with um, very willpower hungry classes such as uh, the apothecaries or the librarians you're finding yourself in a situation where this stratagem alone is worth 25 willpower and that is fantastic so that'll um, for me be a plus uh, tier uh, in itself gateway of infinity super good uh, taxiing uh, service it's a little bit worse uh, than the teleportation of the librarian but it de facto uh, is worth the four ap that you're spending for it if you do it outside of the combat it doesn't even cost ap um, if you're doing it inside of combat it typically is better than moving your characters to the um, individual targets therefore saving you uh, time it is also a great dis disengage tool if you're ever outmatched or outnumbered you can just disengage heal up and uh, take it from there i would give it a solid s tier all around it can become redundant if you do have a librarian but i've used it in so many combinations just if you want to play with uh, out a librarian from uh, from uh, time to time this is an absolute shockingly good stratagem torpor um, receives a solid uh, d tier rating from uh, from my end the idea is great the execution lackluster uh, the idea of torpor and where it really shines is the missions where you are trying to defend against an onslaught of enemies the problem with torpor is 
it only works on already engaged enemies and not on enemies that haven't been revealed because the pots or the blips the way that the game does it is they are not revealed therefore you don't know them uh, yet um, with uh, the expansion you can use the stealth succession to kind of um, scout out non-revealed pots and then torpor would work but in the base game torpor uh, just doesn't do enough uh, for a stratagem slot therefore uh, potentially d uh, tier rating word of the emperor one of uh, the most prestigious and kind of at the very bottom of the research uh, tree but um, niche in its execution if you're running a stun team this year is an a tier pick um, the three stun isn't that much um, it is a nice little extra stun uh, but it isn't kind of completely changing uh, the 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 ball game uh, too much um, if you're not running a stun team it de facto doesn't do a whole lot uh, for you um, so therefore i would uh, give it a c tier rating for being very very niche in its execution high sanctuary on the other hand is something that you can almost use on any team i will give it an a tier rating uh, the great part about this uh, um, uh, stratagem is that it lasts five turns gives you three armor absolutely fantastic for chaos gate missions absolutely fantastic for holding uh, the uh, the line and just increases survivability i would even give it an a plus uh, rating because if you compare it to heal heal 2 for instance heals six points of damage this year gives three points of armor for five rounds therefore mitigating potentially up to 12 points of damage for five rounds so that's 60 points of potential damage that uh, that are mitigated really really good uh, option i absolutely like it moving on to dominate uh, one of the stratagems that disappointed me the most i was incredibly excited about uh, dominated but then i learned that the affliction domination has a couple of down uh, turns number one dominated uh, doesn't affect all of the enemies uh, some of the enemies specifically demons are immune against afflictions and if that happens you cannot dominate a target the three turns looks great on paper but in reality what dominated does is uh, the enemy unit will simply move towards other enemy units and start to attack uh, them whilst it is nice to dominate a large unit like a, a mech or a, a large mechanic unit it is really not that impactful i've oftentimes um, wondered could i've achieved a similar result or a better result with something else and with the um, equipment that exists such as the crazing uh, grenades or such as the halo skulls where uh, you can drop aggro relatively simple in the game. Anything that is vulnerable to either of them um, uh, would uh, basically replace uh, Dominate. So my suggestion for Dominate would be if they do it uh, um, correctly, as in letting you actually play the unit, then it would be an absolute banger because then you can work through it. But uh, since the AI is not very good, uh, Dominate uh, rests solidly in a C minus um, tier. Bloom ex uh, ex uh, Excision is a. All right, sorry for that. So, Bloom Extinction is a stratagem. Uh, that uh, has a nice intention but the execution again isn't working that well it blasts an area purchase 100 percent of the mutations now the game developers thought that mutations would be the absolute killer but in reality mutations oftentimes are just a little bit more ac just a little bit more hit points they are seldomly going to break the bank uh, therefore, even with an area 4, which is a reasonably large size area, you're not doing enough for this to be um, useful. The niche character of it, it becomes only useful in situations where a lot of mutations exist. And even then, it maybe removes 4 armor on 2 characters. So that for a stratagem is not good enough. I tried it. Uh, for me, it rests into F tier. I personally do not like it. Which brings us to precision bombardment. Uh, basically, the poor man's grenade with a little bit of knockback 
looks good on paper until you realize that six damage isn't that much in the end game. This might be one of those stratagems that works well on a standard playthrough, but in legendary and specifically in the end game, we're looking at enemies, uh, the Chaos Space Marines come in at least at 15 hit points with armor, uh, the bigger Chaos Space Marines up to 30 uh, hit points, uh, and you can go through each of uh, the enemies. Um, six points of damage is really not dealing that much. Uh, many of the enemies are also immune to knockback, so the idea of pushing things over the ledge uh, with it isn't really manifesting. And um, I'm always comparing the stratagems towards the equivalent um, items. There are many classes like uh, the uh, Purgator or Purifier that do have <clears throat> three plus two or plus three um, grenade uh, per slot uh, skills, which means if you are having a end game grenade, which by the way deals seven points of damage, the very basic grenade and does a knockback, uh, you have a bigger area and you do have three charges for the uh, one grenade slot that uh, that you are using. All you need to do is bring one of those classes. So in other words, uh, this here would need to either do way more damage or use uh, be used way more often as in once per round for five rounds then it would be a good enough stratagem. As it stands, it's a D-tier stratagem. Righteous Endurance uh, recovers for knights, F-tier straight up, because your knights shouldn't be falling in the first place and your stratagems should um, try to prevent uh, that. Good idea, but I think the execution is horrible. Uh, Tides of Shadow, on the other hand, is a great example of a good, even great uh, stratagem. This one I would put in the same category as High Sanctuary, A+. Plus. Uh, maybe even low S tier. It does, number one, a full team purification, which means that all of the afflictions that are running are simply purged. And number two, for three rounds, it provides 100% resistance, making you quasi immune to any other afflictions other than warp um, effects that are happening. Absolute banger, very much uh, usable in almost any team comp uh, composition. And to a degree, the afflictions are more difficult to remove than say a little bit of damage that you're uh, taking because armor is easier to obtain uh, compared to resistances therefore i would potentially give it an s tier strength of spirit one of the staples you're starting with it uh, 50 percent crit for all of the knights is definitely nothing to scoff at uh, since you can clear an entire map uh, in just one turn that is a straight up 50 percent increased um, uh, increased uh, crit chance I would have put it into S tier if there wouldn't be missions that forcefully let you run through multiple turns. Given that there are the gate missions and the defense missions, it gets an A plus tier, but a strong A plus tier. Mass Purification is the weaker version of Shed uh, Tide of Shadows. It has a little heal in there, but not noticeably enough to justify that you are not getting the resistances for three turns. Whilst this here is um, S minus tier, this here, due to the purification alone and the small heal, Heal, can be an in uh, stratagem loadouts where you need purification and heal at the same time and you can't really decide which one to take uh, so sometimes mass purification is uh, a viable option but the heal isn't that great given how deep it is in the research I would have suggested simply to increase uh, the the heal maybe combine it with uh, heal 2 uh, because purifying plus six heal would be good for a stratagem. As it stands, this is C tier. Search prevention, reduction of uh, search by 100% can be good. Um, both search prevention one and uh, two suffer from the same effect that uh, search by default isn't a negative event. And unless you run a very specific team composition where you are ultra scared of one uh, warp search to happen, uh, I never really understood why you would want to bother with a warp search. You're getting a will point, uh, an effect is happening, the effect is usually um, very much stomachable in most of uh, the cases or you can work around it if you do have a good team composition. So uh, therefore, uh, great uh, in, in working through that mechanic but not necessarily helpful, hence I would give it a C tier. Moving on to equipment, and we're going to do that a little bit uh, quicker. I will go uh, through the different equipment um, concepts. I will start with um, armor, 
and then through go through the weapons and just highlight a couple of examples of what to look out for since the equipment in this game is unique as in you're getting unique weapons and every single weapon and every single armor <clears throat> can only be obtained once you are basically in a situation where you never know what equipment you're going to work with therefore my guide would structure uh, around more principle based applications so that you can um, select your equipment based on exactly that so let's move on to equipment all right in order to keep the guide to a reasonable length i made the executive decision to put the equipment in a separate guide thanks a lot for watching guys if you enjoyed the stratagems then leave a comment and a like down below and don't forget to check out the equipment as well have a good one and bye bye